Hello everyone and welcome to our Focus on Education series. Uh, in our session this evening, we'll be speaking to Dr. Fino Maracu, who's head of the School of Education post-primary at MIC Turles, and he'll be talking about all of our various post-primary programs uh, that are available on our Turles campus in County Tipperary. So Phil is going to make his presentation and then after that uh, we'll have a live Q&A. So if you do have any questions, please remember to use the Q&A facility, type in your question and I can put them to Finn after he's finished his presentation. So I'll now hand you over to Finn to tell you all about the post-primary teaching programs on our Turles campus. Thanks a million, Pat. Uh, for the staff folks, you're very welcome. Thank you for taking the time to, to listen to us tonight. Uh, I hope you'll find this presentation uh, of use as you decide on your next move. And uh, congratulations on getting this far, be you in Leaving Cert or maybe you're in a PLC programme and you've got uh, really good things happening in your programme and you're considering given the quality of your grades that you might like to join us in MIC Thurlis. We also may have people in, in the audience tonight who are of a slightly older age group, 23 and up, who might be thinking of uh, coming back to uh, third level uh, education, coming back to become a teacher. Uh, I cannot think of a better occupation. Now, you might say I'm biased about that, but uh, because I've been a teacher since I was 21 uh, and that was, let's just say, 30 odd years ago. And uh, within, within that time, every year I become more convinced of the power of uh, effective teaching and the influence a good teacher can have. And uh, I, I do hope that among you tonight, that you have one memory, either current or past, of a teacher who made a difference in your life. Um, and to be able to say that at the end of your career, I, I, I think is, is pretty special. And uh, if you want to be that teacher, uh, that's, the, that's the invitation tonight to consider coming our way and becoming a post-primary teacher. Um, you will see in the image I've captured there uh, in pre-COVID times, uh, we believe in students working together. We believe in you uh, engaging with each other. And I'll be showing and sharing a few thoughts with you tonight uh, about a programme. But really the programme is you. Uh, it's about your values, your beliefs, uh, you wanting to become a teacher. And we will support you to be the teacher you uh, wish to be. Uh, and in turn, we'll, we'll, on occasions, we'll challenge you to be the teacher we think you need to be. Uh, and that's an evolving conversation based on your values, based on your strengths, your personal strengths, as well as your professional strengths. And I guess something that is lost upon people when they talk about teacher preparation programs, and you note I don't say teacher training because you train, you, you train people to do certain things, but to prepare and educate is a different ask. You not only train, but you also learn the decision making that has to happen and which is the best decision to make at a certain time. And you have a range of skills and a repertoire of skills that you draw upon, and that's the educational piece. The training can be to have the skills and the educational preparation piece as well. Which skills will I use at a particular time for a particular student in a particular circumstance? So we're 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 in um, we're in this space now where you're considering your your career choice, and it, as I say, it may be your first career choice, it may not. But I'm really really grateful for you tuning in tonight, and I am going to go through the program relatively quickly. I hope and then really looking forward to your questions and answering your questions as best we can. So MIC Thurlis is based in uh, County Tipperary. Location wise, it's, uh, it's on a motorway, it's on the main railway line, and it's quite accessible from Limerick, Cork, Dublin. It's all about an hour's journey, give or take. And it's also the space where we have a relatively small campus. We expect our student numbers to be at about 500 or thereabouts in September. 
So, you know, some of you are in, in secondary schools bigger than that. Uh, and that comes with many advantages uh, to have a campus that size in the sense that we all know each other. We, we all know each other by our first names and we work very closely together. And we're also conscious that we're different. We're not, we're not all the same. We don't all think the same way. And that's, that's the beauty of our program. Uh, we celebrate diversity. Uh, lovely article in the paper recently by a second year student on that point, Josh Mullen in The Independent. Uh, we do celebrate diversity and uh, we do a lot of work in that in that space. Uh, my background is I was a teacher for um, quite a number of years, post primary teacher of Gaelgan history, but specifically worked in the area of special education. Then I joined the inspectorate and I worked in the inspectorate for 14 years or so uh, as a senior inspector for special educational needs. Very topical at the moment, as you know, from from all that's going on in the news. And um, and then I, I was lucky enough to be appointed head of school in MIC Thurlis. So really in, in school terms, I'm, I'm, I'm the principal of the school in Thurlis uh, and our program is up and running and I'll go into more detail in due course. But we do stress that we're united, but we're not uniform and that diversity is very, very important. We also stress the notion of believing, belonging and becoming that you must believe in yourself and we will help you believe in yourself even more and we'll help you with your confidence and we'll help you grow and develop. And if you're nervous about career choice, that's a sign of intelligence. And if you're doubtful about your career choice, equally, that is a sign that you are in a, a space that's uh, maybe a little bit ponderous and maybe a little bit frightening. But I hope it's also exciting and that tonight will help you uh, not make a definitive decision, but may help you along the process of making a decision. And can I offer as well that what I am saying tonight is tonight's conversation, but I will be sharing my mobile and email and I am quite open to people making uh, connections with me subsequently. You may not be comfortable asking a question tonight or maybe tomorrow you say, oh sugar, I should have asked that fellow that question. You can ask uh, through email or uh, mobile phone. There's absolutely no problem. And uh, that's what we're that's what we're here for. So um, that's that's the, the, the opening slide and I'll move to the next slide now and we'll have a, a look uh, a little bit more at what we have to offer on our program. So we have six undergraduate honours degree programmes for post primary teaching. All uh, accredited by the Teaching Council in that they go before the Teaching Council and are accredited and we work with uh, quite a number of schools and we work with quite a number of people. Again, I'll go into a little bit more detail about that in due course. But there you can see we have Ava on the right hand side giving us a smile uh, and on the left hand side is one of the larger rooms that we would use. And the lecturer on that occasion was was a visitor from Canada, uh, Professor Barry Bennett. And we work with you then across a four year program. So you take two art subjects and we'll go through the subjects in a moment. And you also pursue a career uh, path in education. So you will find yourself with modules on how to teach and with modules on how to improve what you know in a particular subject, be it business, Gaelga, uh, mathematics and so forth. So that's that's just a, a brief outline. Now, unfortunately, our campus is closed and it's a gorgeous campus and I, I can nearly smell it looking at those photographs. Uh, and I really do wish uh, that you can you can visit our campus and who knows, maybe you can. Uh, in due course, fingers crossed, and hopefully things will get better uh, and allow us to open up and to share the space and give you an opportunity to see see what's what's taking place. So in the next slide, I'm going to have a quick look at the um, other aspect of our program, which is the points. And I know you'll be anxious to know what were the points last year and even more anxious, what will the points be this year? I can't tell you what the points will be other than to say that we're in existence for the last uh, four years and every year the points have gone up on our programme and there is a growing demand for what we're doing and what we have to offer. One of the reasons there's a demand for what we have to offer is the quality of our teaching and learning and the quality subsequently of our graduates 
uh, and schools are very anxious to to acquire our students and to employ our students. So last year, just to give you a sense, uh, we had 150 students um, enrolled in, in, in year one. And we have 148 of those students still with us. Two students for personal reasons had to drop out. So we have a very high retention rate. Uh, and that is despite uh, being online because of COVID and so forth. Um, so we're very proud of building connections. That line of uh, believe, belong, become uh, that middle line belonging is very important to us. Uh, our staff are very approachable. As we say, if we if we hit around 500 uh, in our number of students, then you're talking about a staff in the region of 25 or 30. Uh, and again, all have offices on campus and all are very supportive and we'll meet you on the corridor, meet you over coffee, meet you in formal setting if you want to make an appointment in their office and so forth. So BA uh, Business and Accounting came in at 402, Business and Religion came in at 368 points, Gaelgan Business 401, uh, Gaelgan Religious Studies 409, Maths and Gaelgan 444, uh, and Business and Mathematics at 434. So that's where we're at with our programmes. Uh, they're the six programmes that we have to offer. Could we, will we offer more? We may do so, but that's what we'll be offering uh, come September. So that's what's available currently on your CAO form. And um, and the next slide, I'm going to just give a little bit more attention to some aspects of our program. So if it's possible to move to the next slide there, uh, just to give you a brief sense of who we are as well because you can't meet us i just thought it might be nice just to show you some of the faces we had a meeting yesterday uh there's some of the staff at that meeting we were looking at actually uh, we were looking at teaching and learning and assessment to be exact and um you can see uh, a range of staff there we have Catherine and nigel and marion's off camera because our broadband was wasn't working very well uh, Derek is in our maths department, Maria is in business, Madeline is in accounting, uh, Deirdre is in business, Tayo is in education, uh, Olive there is in accounting, and Kate up in the top left hand corner and Nigel are, are in education. So that's just to give you a, a sense of, of, of the staff and uh, on the next slide I will talk a little bit more about the programme. And what I will be talking about here for you is just clarity around what we're talking about in the sense of you have modules in education, you have modules on one of your subject. Mod module is just posh for a course, OK? You have different courses and they all form a programme. So we have education courses, subject one, subject two, and your school placement, which is obviously a, a very important component of, of the programme. And the centerpiece is you. It's all about you. And we start with you and we develop your skills. We also listen to your ambition. We listen to what you want to achieve. We listen when things uh, may not go as well as you wish. And, and we support you across your four years uh, of your time uh, in our company in MIC Thurless. So what I'll do in the next slide now is I'll go into a little bit more detail around the program structure. So the interplay, which is very important, is between school, the campus and yourself. OK, so we have our campus, MIC Thurless. We have your school placement, um, which happens across the programme in, in normal circumstances. In year one, you'd be going out for a week to primary. Uh, you might well say, why would I be going to primary? But we find that we build up your, your lens and your critical view of, of what good teaching is in semester one of year one. And again, semester is just that period of time between September and Christmas. That's semester one. Semester two is simply January through to May. Uh, and the good news for those of you in school is that you finish earlier is two 12 week blocks. A semester is 12 weeks uh, and we walk right through and you on average your 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 studies involve 15 hours contact time so you'll have about five modules uh five courses uh sometimes you might have two education uh two of one subject and and one of another subject and it can vary but usually five modules uh per semester and you attend two hour lecture and one hour tutorial uh 
the two hour lecture is for everybody. The tutorial then is something like this on the left where you can practice your teaching, where you can ask questions. And we have two students here who are actually team teaching. So they're standing up practicing their teaching skills uh, and the other students in the class are, are um, playing the role of being pupils in the school. And, and that then th those 15 hours are complemented by your own study that you would do separately. And um, the school placement piece then is built into it. So within four years, you qualify with your BA degree in your two chosen subjects and you qualify with a teaching qualification. So rather than pushing it out uh, over six years, you actually um, acquire a professional uh, uh, qualification after four years. And you know the way we phrase it sometimes, it's it's uh, twice twice the value and half the price because there is a magic about the campus and the school and you playing off each other from from the get go. So from the very beginning, you're inside. Let's say you take business. You're inside the business class. You're learning about business and you're thinking, how would I teach it? You're inside an education module. You're learning about teaching and you're thinking about, well, that might link with business and what we were doing the other day. So from the minute you join us, you are becoming a teacher. Uh, and I think that that that's a powerful uh, advantage. The financial advantage is there, obviously, as is the time one in that you qualify within four years and you're out and you're employable. Uh, but I think actually the quality of what we do is very dependent upon that fact that one plays off the other across four years. So going back to school placement year two, then you're on placement for six weeks. Our students are out on placement at the moment across 225 schools. Uh, and obviously the schools are closed, but that's not to say that they're not working online. They're team teaching, they're observing, they're working with their cooperating teacher and uh, a shout out to all schools and principals who have been really, really supportive of our program at this time. And again, that shows the mutual respect that we as a campus have with, with our school partners. And um, you don't need to know about all the other things we do with schools and the webinars and the, the post grad programs we offer. We just know that we have built up very good relationships with our schools uh, and this COVID crisis for all for all the sadness and 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 hurt and pain that it's brought. Uh, it hasn't visited us in the sense of school placement has not been affected thanks to the very good work of school principals, cooperating teachers and others in our school community. So that's year two, you're on placement. Year three, you're on placement for two weeks. Uh, the beauty about year three is you could be on placement anywhere in the world. It's up to you. Uh, the program is designed so that you could travel anywhere. Um, unfortunately, you'd have to pay your own way uh, for most of you. But fortunately, we do have uh, scholarships and we do have programs that allow you, for example, last year before COVID, we had students in Boston College and we had students in Japan uh, in year three uh, for, for their placement. And you might be thinking, Japan, do, do you have to have Japanese? No, they visited an international school. Uh, and of course, the, the principal of that school happened to be an Irish woman. And, um, and, that's, and that's how it goes. And I'll talk a little bit more about the international program later on. Then in year four, you're on school placement for 12 weeks. So basically the semester. And uh, again, you're supported as always on school placement by placement tutors. All our staff go out and assist and support you on placement. And um, if you're wondering about how do you get a school, the good news is that we, unlike a lot of colleges, actively work with you and with the schools in order for you to get the school that you may wish to have. Usually what we do is we say in year two, give us your three top three schools that you'd like to be on school placement for. And then we work with the schools and see can we get the best match and it means you can be at home. It means that you can be uh, in a variety of schools, which is important as well, because um, you can't just go to your own school uh, every time you need to go and visit other schools. And I know some of you do end up in your old school uh, in year four for that extended placement, but some of you may, may, may not wish to go back to your old school and uh, and that's quite acceptable and understandable as well. So you get a variety of opportunity across the four years with regard to school placement, including an international dimension in year three. 
And in year three, if you want to, you let's say you have an aunt in Glasgow, and if you can show us that you can stay in Glasgow safely and that you can access a learning uh, environment, be it a school or a training centre, uh, et cetera, et cetera, uh, then that's quite legitimate for you to be uh, uh, able to travel uh, and take advantage of maybe some connections you may have. Boston and Japan are paid for, and that's a scholarship everybody else uh, unfortunately you'd have to make your own way but that said if you know somebody then hopefully you'll be put up for free okay so i better keep going because i'm conscious of time uh, as you can see i can talk a lot for for uh, for mic thoroughness and i can talk with passion and with pride because we we are doing good work and uh, as i say really really delighted that you're giving it uh, a consideration uh, this evening uh, and thank you for, for joining me and, and thank you for considering us. So on the next slide, we will uh, continue the conversation, uh, go a little bit deeper. On the right, you can see you have the professional conduct uh, for teachers. And there should be a point in there, the third point from the end, trust, respect, care and integrity. That's the central focus of uh, the Teaching Council Code of Conduct and it's the central focus of how we operate uh, as a campus, uh, not just from a student uh, lecturer point of view, but everybody on the campus, from, from the captain of the team to the campus janitor and everybody in between, we're all in this together. And trust, respect, care and integrity is not reserved for a certain group, it's reserved for everybody. Uh, so when you join us, you'll be joining a quality program that is anchored in teaching, learning and assessment. Uh, we will focus on your per personal, professional and pedagogical development. Personal development is important. Resilience, well-being, that's that's central to, to, to what we're at, as is enhancing, exploring, discussing your values, your ambitions and your beliefs around what it means to be an effective teacher. From the professional point of view, you have the school placement piece, as I mentioned earlier, but there's also, you know, how, how do you go about uh, with regard to dress and behaviour uh, as a student teacher. We'll talk to you about, you know, being aware of uh, social media and your footprint and your fingerprint when it comes to social media and the importance of your your behaviour. And you are a brand in the sense of you are a student teacher uh, and you have to look after your reputation. Uh, on social media and in every other activity that you undertake. And that's because you are a professional and it's also because as a professional, you're working with other people. There other people are in your care uh, and that that can be kind of a funny one when you're a first year student or indeed a second year student and you're out on placement and somebody calls you sir or miss. And you, you suddenly realize, oh, they're, they're actually addressing me. Uh, and that's that development and that sense of identity. And that's a lovely journey. And we really enjoy traveling and walking with you on that journey. And then the pedagogical, which is the big the big word for tonight. And pedagogical is posh for teaching, learning and assessment. And we will help you develop uh, your teaching skills. We'll help you develop your learning skills and we'll help you develop uh, how you assess in the sense of how you would judge uh, the learning that's happening or maybe not happening as the case may be in a class. So that's us. Uh, we're very big into differentiation and collaboration. Uh, what you do on your own is important. What you do with others is where the real stuff happens. Uh, what we mean by differentiation is linked in part to being an inclusive teacher. You will teach all children, not some children. You will teach all. Uh, we work very closely with external organizations, be it Adam Harrison, as I am, or Middletown Center for Autism. We work with DESH schools. We work with a whole range of organizations. We work with direct provision and children who may be coming from um, displaced communities. So there's a whole range of things that you can get involved in and indeed that you can initiate because they're small enough to allow that happen as well. And um, in that space, we then push the notion of you being a reflective teacher. That's not to do with having reflective armbands. That's simply to do with you thinking about what you're doing, reviewing your actions. Why? Again, because you are working with others. Others are dependent upon you. So you are there for, uh, how shall I say, you are obliged to reflect. You have to think about how things are going. Why? Because it's impacting on other people. 
so that's the the power and 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 also the pressure i guess that comes with being an effective teacher and you know you know the good teachers always care you know the good teachers always think and you know the good teachers will apologize when they're wrong as well and and, and you'll only apologize when you're able to reflect because in reflecting you can see where you went wrong but it doesn't have to be always negative reflection can be a very positive experience as well and give you confidence to go and and do even more good work so i i, I reference the the trust respect care and integrity and they play off each other all the time and we do believe in the centrality of the teacher that a teacher makes a difference as i said earlier i do hope you have one and maybe you were lucky maybe you have more than one teacher who has made a positive difference to your world then the opposite may be true. Unfortunately, you may have a teacher who influenced you negatively and you know exactly what not to be. Uh, and that's that's an important learning space as well. And I think at this point, I should also say that what you bring is not just your personality. You bring a whole load of experiences which you can draw upon. Very, very briefly, uh, I think it's a funny story, but a kind of funny story. I remember meeting a student who uh, was nervous um, Sorry, I just see the, the light is very poor there. Give me one second, I'll turn on the light. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, just one sec there, yeah. Um, so you can see me in a better light, I hope. Um, so I was talking to a student and they were saying, I'm really worried about classroom management. And I said, yeah, and 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 so you should, because every student's worried about classroom manager. Who is it? You wouldn't be human if you weren't worried about classroom management, you start teaching. So you're, but the curious thing, when I was talking to this 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 particular student, I said, let's, 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 let's call him Mick. I said, Mick, am I right in thinking that you were telling me that you work in a pub and you know it's uh, you do you, you you you're often on your own in a pub late at night and you have to look after uh you know the the pub and you have to look after the uh the whole the whole the whole thing and he said yeah and i said what about i said how do you manage people how do you manage somebody that maybe had a little bit too much to drink how do you manage um time how do you manage the orders and the sequence and all of that and he said, oh yeah, but that, that, that just comes with practice. And I said, it's the same with classroom management. Think of the skills that you would bring into your into your world as a teacher. And that's, that's, that's an important point, I think. You're not coming as an empty vessel into teaching. You have loads to offer already. Personality, yes, but also you may have experience uh, working in a bar. You may have experience of teaching Irish dancing to young children. You may have a total range of skills that you can draw upon uh, you know, I talk about the inclusive teacher. You may well have uh, a brother, a sister, a relative, a friend who may have a special educational need and maybe you've helped them already. So it's it's bringing what you have, adding to it in our company and you graduate four years later as a teacher. Yes. And the final line there, but also as a leader, uh, a researcher and a learner. So I'm, I'm conscious of your time, folks, so I better I better speed it up. Uh, I think I have about three or four slides left. So next slide, we will look at some of the other aspects, uh, unique features of our campus. You're missed. Uh, I'm sorry to say that, folks, but we're small enough to know that if you're missing, uh, you're missing. Um, so it's safe. Uh, Torlis is a safe place. The campus is a safe place. And if you do go missing for whatever reason, you will get you will get an email from us. You won't be given out to because you're you're mature now, you're over 18, you're making your own decisions, but we do care and we do get concerned if somebody goes missing and we just drop you an email and it might be as simple as, hi Mary, hope all okay, haven't seen you for a while, if we can help in any way, make contact. And that that can be it, it can be as enough, as simple, that can be enough. Uh, other times students will come up to us and say, look, I think, I think Nick or Mary is under pressure at the moment and we take it from there. So we look out for each other, we care for each other uh, and we do it quietly and we don't boast about it, but we do look out for each other. That's for sure. So we have 434 students currently. It's a four year concurrent program. Concurrent is part for your BA subjects, your BA degree and your teaching qualification happen at the same time. The four school placements I spoke about, the alignment of pedagogy, so it's all about teaching, learning and assessment. Uh, we have networks as a department inspector. I would have a lot of networks with schools 
and we support you with your school placement by the staff going out and, and uh, engaging with you as well. So all our staff are involved in anticipation of school placement. We do, we practice and we have a bit of fun and a giggle around that. Uh, it's a bit like stand up comedy sometimes, um, but we laugh with each other, not at each other. Uh, and it is a learning game, uh, as we all know. And then the internationalization piece, year three and year four, I spoke about. Year three is that two weeks and year four is at the end. Uh, I already have, for example, schools in, in Perth and Sydney lined up who would happily take you at the end of your year four. Uh, and you might like to spend some time in the school and then travel and so forth. So loads of opportunities for travel. Uh, and on the next slide, I think I actually have some of the, the, the countries with the USA, Japan and so forth. Oh yeah, before I get to the international piece, just to say the research piece. Uh, so for example, we had a webinar the other night um, and that's, that's something that you're probably saying re research, really, me, no. But you'd be surprised. What we really like to do is to get to know you enough to say, well, what area are you really interested in? For some of you, it's special education. For others, it's Gaelga or business or accounting or religion. And what we do then is we help you dig deep and find out a lot more about your actual uh, subject area. And that that slide there is just from Monday night where we had some international guests, James Spillane there, the guy in the bottom on the left, uh, second in on the left. Uh, is a world renowned researcher. Next to him is Tomas Rowe, the director of the Teaching Council. And you might recognize me next to him there. Um, yeah, I'm in the attic a lot these days, given COVID and everything else. So that's another piece to another string to your bow when you come to us is we and then we put you in touch with with researchers who are publishing and that that's really cool then because you, you get access to, to the expertise that's out there and it's global expertise. So next slide, please, which I hope is the global piece around our uh, international dimension. So look, as it stands, we have connections and growing connections with countries as far afield as Mexico, Morocco, Canada, Brazil, the USA, Canada is there twice, sorry about that, Australia, Nepal, Japan and, and South Africa. So they're all to play for combined with your own um, connections as well and we can draw upon those but I guess it's important to say it's optional it's not an international program it's a program with an, an international dimension some of you might be homesick when you get to the get get outside your front door others might be sick of home and you want to travel okay but this is optional it's not that you have to do this but it might be something that might be attractive to you um, over over the course of your program. OK, so the next slide I'm drawing to a close. You have first year accommodation all going well. We'll be open in September 36 single room accommodation and Rob O'Halloran, my colleague in Thurles, will, will look after you there and you can have a look at that when when it opens up and that's for first years only. OK, next slide, please. We will have a quick look at the other supports. You might recognise Desi Hutchinson there scoring a goal against Clare uh, in this year's championship. Desi is one of our first year students. We have good hurling teams, we have good camogie teams. Our ladies football team is made up of quite a lot of inter-county players uh, and are, have, have been very successful. But the funny thing about Thurles is it's so small that even if you're an average hurler, the next thing you're, you're training with somebody like Desi Hutchinson or your 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 um your 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 playing a match with uh, a member of you know uh, the the Cork ladies football team or Monaghan ladies football team, and it's it's really really nice that that can happen. We just have one team. We're we're like a small village, uh, and there you can see we our first All Ireland as MIC Thurles was our Camogie team uh, back in 2018. So look, the supports are there, the additional stuff. The great thing about Thurles is if you want to set up a society, you can. If you want to set up a club of any description, you can. All you need is to get 20 petitions and off you go. You'll actually get funding from the student union. The last one that was set up, uh, I think, was a jive, jive dancing club, which was going pretty well until COVID kicked in. But I'm sure it'll uh, it'll be revived. And for all I know, it might still be going online. Um, but look, the biggest support on our campus is each other. Uh, we have an open door policy. We don't judge anybody by creed or colour or anything else. It's an open door policy. We are state funded. 
we need diverse teachers to be in diverse classrooms and that is our plan and that is our target and you can come directly from leaving cert or if you have the qualifications you can tr come through the qqi route or if you're over 23 you can come through the mature applicants route and you are all more than welcome and the diversity in that alone is powerful for us and and helps us be a better place the last thing you want is everybody the same that just doesn't work so we have our clubs and societies we've our chaplain and counselors there we have access scholarships which we can talk a little about as well in a while and we have academic support so if you want an extra uh, help with Gaelga or academic writing or mathematics that's all there for you and I suppose it's important especially if you're in leaving search space and you're interested in religion business or accounting you do not I repeat you do not need to have those subjects in your leaving cert in order to study them at third level and in fact in some scenarios the lecturers say the best students are often those who are passionate about the subject as opposed to having done it in the leaving cert and indeed I think that's an important point as well be choose your subjects because of your passion some people say which which ones will give me the jobs at the moment if you have Gaelga it's very easy to get a job but there's no point in being a Muntour Gaelga unless you're passionate about Gaelga it's as simple as that so make sure whatever you're choosing lines up with your passion and that you're following your heart uh, when it comes to the subject choices that you make so thank you James we'll, we'll go to the next slide please and um, just very brief I'm not going to go into detail here but there are scholarships it is costly to go to college we know that but as I say we see ourselves four years half the price twice the value as opposed to if you were to do a PME program where you do your degree over three four years and then you do um, your PME over two years so that's that's just uh, a rough idea on the cost things. Uh, we have sports scholarships uh, as well as uh, academic scholarships. We have a Tomar fund, thanks to, to Tom Kavanagh's Tomar fund uh, for students coming through the QQI path. And we also have supports for mature students. And obviously there are financial supports and there are hardship funds as the needs arise as well. So what I really like about MIC is it, 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 it says it says what it what, what it does, what it says on the tin, which is it looks out for everybody uh, and it's a very caring space. So um, that's that's the financial aspect. And the, the, the big message tonight though is the bottom line is, is it's about you. And like that butterfly, you're going from year one, two, three, four with us until you're ready to take off like our year fours currently are. And um, during your evolution, we always encourage you to remember, don't be afraid to be brilliant. Somebody has to be brilliant. So why can't it be you? So I think we're nearly there. Maybe there's one more slide. Um, yeah, be sure to, to be in touch. Stay in touch with us. There are my details. And that's the last sunny day I remember in, in Thurles with, with a, a gang of what looks like second years out on the lawn. So, uh, thank you very much for your attention. And I'm going to finish with one more slide because I was reading this book over Christmas. Uh, I think it might be there. Tara Westover, thank you, yeah. Uh, and she said, uh, Wh whomever you become, whatever you make yourself into, that is who you always were. It was always in you. So if teaching is always in you, then maybe Thurlis might be the place to consider. So thank you for your attention. And we we'll go back to, to Pat. Happy to answer any questions that you may have. Meanwhile, stay safe and stay in touch. Gormagov. That's great, Craig. Thanks very much. That was a very um, detailed uh, presentation there. You have an awful lot of information. We have uh, lots of questions that I'm going to put to you now in a second. Um, for anyone else that's watching, if you do have a question, please feel free to use the uh, Q&A facility and I'll put it to Finn. So uh, first question, Finn, I think this is many uh, could be from a mature student. Uh, they want to know how uh, they want to know, are there many mature students who choose to study to become a post primary teacher? How do they get on the programme and what is involved in the interview for mature students? And I think this person, it's maths and Irish are, are the subjects you're interested in. Great stuff. Great question, Pat. Uh, good one to open with. Yeah, we have quite a number of places set aside for our mature students. In our first year cohort of 150, we would have 20 mature students coming through that mature route. Uh, and I expect that number to grow. 
Um, what it involves, uh, I think it's important to say that the interview is probably the wrong word in that it's it's a conversation, it's a chat. You apply uh, through your uh, access route as a mature student. Uh, your name comes before us and really what we would do uh, then is we'd make contact with you and have a conversation to make sure that this is the right decision for you at this time and to answer any questions that you may have. Uh, and that's the chat or the interview, uh, as I say. When we do meet, the, the question always asked is, am I alone? Am I the only mature student? And as you can see from the figures, you're certainly not going to be on your own as a mature student. And there are quite a variety of people on our campus that fit into that mature category but they themselves again going back to that point no two people are the same some of them are are single people who are stepping back from a job that maybe isn't giving them as much satisfaction as they would like others are married and uh, may have lots of commitments at home but are making a decision now that they, they they want to go back to education or they want to go to third level for the first time and there are lots of supports. And again, the biggest support among the mature student population on our campus is each other and they meet and they support uh, and they offer huge support to the students who are coming from Leaving Cert. And in turn, they knock a bit of fun out of encountering young people. And, and again, that diversity and, and that opportunity to play off each other is, um, is, is, is most enjoyable. The, the the biggest concerns that mature students would have would be around um, the the time management uh, and yet Pat what we find and I, I'm sure you've experienced this as well is curiously the people who have other commitments are very often the the best time managers they're the people who get their uh, assignments done a lot of our work is continuous assessment so they map their time, they take full use of their time on campus. They also make good decisions around uh, time management at home. And uh, quite often the mature students are the students that come to the fore on our program because they're committed, they're dedicated, they have life experiences already and they they understand the importance of managing your time and, and also managing your, your energy levels across the program. So I would absolutely be thrilled to, to see mature applicants come our way. And when you do, we do offer to meet you. Please don't see it as a, a test of whether you, you can come or not. That's not what it's about. It's a conversation to see, is this the right fit at this time for you? And it's an opportunity to ask questions that you might not be able to ask otherwise. So thanks for that, Pat. I hope I've answered that question. Yeah, yeah, some great points there, Finn. I think um, definitely don't be put off if you are a mature student, I think is the main message there. Um, next question, Finn. I think this is probably to do more with the QQI routes, but um, uh, this person wants to know, as a PLC student, am I, eligible, am I able to qualify for courses in the 400 points, even though PLC points is 390 maximum? Yeah, the, I, I think the best thing to, to say about the PLC is not to focus so much on the points, but focus on your distinctions in the sense that the, the two programs, and we will be expanding this, but for this year, the two programs that link directly with uh, QQI qualifications are the business and religion and the business and accounting programs. And within those programs, uh, my understanding is that if you have a certain number of distinctions, I think it might be five distinctions at a level five QQI and four distinctions at a level six QQI, uh, you're then in a position to come across uh, and enter the teaching profession. And again, you bring a huge, huge value to the teaching profession because you will be working with students who will understand where you're coming from. So you'll be teaching young people and you'll be giving them the confidence uh, and the opportunities to blossom and grow uh, just as I hope we can we can offer to you. Uh, and that's that's the current scenario with with the QQI. So focus on your distinctions. There is a handbook for the education introduced to MIC, which is available on the website and that will give you more detail. But as always, feel free to come back to us if you have any um, 
uh, clarifying questions that you may have around it. We usually reserve around 10% of our places for QQI. It's supported by the government. The government is very anxious again, that diversity in teaching piece. Uh, and within that 10%, you can see that we would have 15 places if we had 150 students. Last year, we had, uh, I think it was 11 took up the opportunity uh, from a QQI perspective. Yeah, thanks for that, Finn, there. And you can find all the entry requirements on the website as well, mic.ie, if you, if you want to look that up too. Um, uh, this is probably a COVID question for you, Finn, here. Um, this person wants to know, has learning remotely been as effective as the course normally would be for students uh, in relation to learning to be a teacher? Yeah, it's a really good question. Um, it's different. Uh, it has asked lots of challenges of staff and students but it has proved to be um, very positive in many ways. We are a face-to-face -face program. We look forward to going back to being a face-to-face -face program, particularly when you think of practicing your teaching skills. You need to have the opportunity to be in small groups, to stand up, to practice your teaching, to devise a lesson plan, to bring it uh, into uh, a small group and, and practice how you frame questions, how you give feedback, how you create groups effectively and all the rudimentary components of effective teaching. That said, this year we we were we were dealt a certain um, hand when when it came to COVID, uh, and I think we've responded remarkably well. We have online classes, obviously, and uh, in that we have worked very closely with uh, technology and and cutting edge technology around breakout rooms, around students presenting online, around sharing screens and, and so on and so forth. And um, in, that, in that context, we have come as close as we could to giving students the opportunity to, to present and, and to practice their teaching skills. Skills which begin, by the way, with voice projection, skills which involve um, clear presentation, uh, skills which involve asking good questions as well as being able to answer questions and all of those skills uh, are however remotely are being um, improved and enhanced uh, through this online mechanism. Our first years come back uh, um, next week as does everybody else well apart from those on school placement and they already have had opportunities to practice some of the aspects of teaching and we will continue to develop those so that they have an opportunity to teach one another in small breakout rooms and so forth. So yeah, it's uh, it's been a challenge, but uh, not an insurmountable one. And again, the students have been phenomenal uh, in that regard and our attendance is extremely high and we're monitoring our attendance all the time for fear that COVID is impacting upon it. Uh, and we're delighted to say that it hasn't impacted in any way. Uh, from that point of view, um, it's just a pity that we can't have more opportunity to be face to face. One of the things we find, Pat, is that we have a not, an awful lot more emails because otherwise, you know, when you're face to face, a lecture is over and you're walking out and somebody might ask a question or somebody hangs back and says, can I have a word? Uh, and we, we lose all those lovely magic moments through not being face to face. But um, you know, the, the, the catch up then is that that people can email us. And as I said, we, we like to think we're very approachable and um, students are, are well able and are uh, extremely, um, not extremely, but are always encouraged to, to, to make contact. Because, you know, you might have a pebble in your shoe, it could be something tiny. Uh, and the best thing to do is to share that with somebody, get it resolved and you can move on then. Thanks very much, Finn. Um, next question then is, this person wants to know, are some of the teaching subjects more employable than others? For example, would the business and Irish uh, course have more employment opportunities than the business and religious course? Yeah, it, it's a good question. Uh, it, it, it depends. Uh, currently, as I said, Gaelga is uh, in high demand. Uh, there aren't enough Montori Gaelga out there to cover the amount of positions being made available. Uh, but again, I think the first place you need to go when it comes to your subject choice is have you a passion to grow an interest in these subjects? Because, uh, yeah, I, I appreciate you can be strategic about your choice of subjects, 
but uh, you have to have a passion and an interest in them. And all of us know, we all remember the teacher who was passionate and interested in their subject, just as we remember the teacher who wasn't. And uh, we want to be the first type of teacher, um, but definitely Gwelga and Maths are in high demand at the moment. Business and religion would be in demand, obviously, because there's a teacher supply issue anyway, in that there's a shortage. And over the next number of years, that shortage will continue at post primary. I think it's flattening at primary around now. So when the current cohort of entrants, as in, sorry, the current group we're talking to enter, uh, the, that population bulge will still be there in the post primary sector and should be there upon their graduation as well. So I would be hopeful that there will be plenty of job opportunities. You may not get a permanent job straight away, but the job uh, opportunities on our course um, would be quite high in, in the high 80s. Uh, and that's partly because of the subjects, but it's also partly because of the brand. It's, it's MIC and it's seen as a brand of quality out there. And uh, it has a reputation both nationally and indeed internationally should people wish to travel. Thanks, Finn. Next question then is, would a student currently studying Japanese for the Leaving Cert have a better chance of obtaining the opportunity to study abroad in Japan? Uh, we certainly would give that every consideration. The way you get to Japan and uh, one good way of getting to Japan is to have Japanese, but you will be given the opportunity to write a short piece around why you should be chosen to go and visit there. And then we'd have an interview. Uh, and last year, two students traveled together. Uh, you wouldn't be traveling on your own. And um, I would suggest that when you're filling out your application to say why you should be chosen, I think having Japanese would certainly help your cause. Absolutely. OK, next question is um, to do, I suppose, with the timetable, Finn. Uh, they want to know what is the timetable like for lectures from previous experience at third level uh, with a lecture in the morning and then a long break until the next lecture in the afternoon, for example, and they're just wondering how the days are structured. Yeah, um, thanks, Pat. Uh, we, we, we have 434 students um, pursuing a timetable at the moment. OK, it's online, but if, if it was face to face, as we said, it's a 15 hour week. So we, we, we have students coming from from Killybegs to Killarney uh, and everywhere in the country. So we always try and finish if we can at all on a Friday, we finish at the latest two o'clock and that's to allow people get home. Uh, some people have to travel considerable journeys to get home and we don't want people on the road late at night in the dark and so forth. Um, so from that point of view, we try and have the la law on, on a Friday. We try similarly on a Monday morning that we wouldn't start before 10 if we can at all. Uh, and then other than that, it's a rhythm of four and a half days. There are gaps in your day, absolutely. And you can use those gaps uh, wisely and, and, and effective students use them by studying, visiting the library, working down their assignments and so on and so forth. Um, the, 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 the challenge with uh, maybe a class at 10 in the morning and not having a class until five in the evening, we work very hard to avoid that. Uh, and so far we have succeeded in avoiding that. And in fact, the larger the college grows, the easier it is to avoid such. We also have a great sympathy for um, people who may have other responsibilities. You might be a carer at home, either with young children or maybe with your parents. And we can negotiate timetables as well, because what you will find, if you look at the timetable, you might be frightened by, hey, there's a lot more than 15 hours there. But that's because all the tutorials are on the timetable as well. So, for example, in first year this year, I would have two hours of lectures and I would have six tutorials and that's all on the timetable. But the reality is for a student is they'll have two hours of lectures and only one tutorial and we can negotiate where that tutorial would be subject to your subject to your needs, be it geographical. Or, or be it because of uh, other responsibilities you may have. So, for example, uh, a young uh, student, sorry, a, a young uh, parent who's a student this year said, look, I got to collect the kids at a certain time. 
and we were able to work the timetable around that. Uh, so we're small enough to be to be flexible uh, and responsive to individual needs when they arise. Thanks, Vince. Great to know that flexibility is there. Um, next question then. This person wants to know, is the Irish manageable and is there support if you're struggling with um, some aspects of, uh, of the Gaeilge? Yeah, absolutely. The, 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 the Irish is more than manageable and the Irish is about attitude um, and Gaeilge is just a language. Uh, and you will come with enough Gaeilge, I have no doubt, and you will leave with more Gaeilge of that, I have absolutely no doubt. If you do find that, you know, the level of Gaeilge is a little bit more than you expected, maybe you, you didn't go to uh, a school that predominantly, maybe you didn't go to a Gael school or a Gael Kalosh or more humble, or maybe you're inside in class in Thurles and there's people from the Gael took the round you with Gael and Alling, or maybe you learned your Irish through English, uh, which is something you won't be doing as a teacher, but maybe you have experienced as a student. Uh, and that can come as a jolt then all of a sudden go will, you know, on 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 Leach Tori Glortas Gaelga because Neil and Sheeda Glortas Birla. And that 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 can bring its own challenge. So we do have uh, academic supports and we do have an assigned uh, tutor who's a qualified teacher and is doing her own PhD studies. And that person will meet with you on a one to one or you might like to meet in small groups and it's totally optional and it's a drop in free service and that is there to support you. But I would also say that every staff member is approachable and that is also an important point that you can put up your hand early in the year and say, look, this is a little bit trickier than I thought. Um, can you help me? Can you give me some advice? And we certainly can do that. The trust negative on Gaeltucht and, and going to the Gaeltucht is an opportunity as well where students blossom and where they develop their Irish and can improve it significantly. But really it starts with attitude path and it also starts with that support group that the the, the Scolari Gaelga can can work and create their own Kirkle Cora and create their own Sean Rakadrov and work together. And again, we will be very supportive of that. And quite a number of staff who may not be part of Rhina Gaelga would have Gaelga and would be supportive of the language as well. So lots of opportunities, but I think it begins with with attitude, to be honest. And if you have the right attitude, you will have no problems with the Gaelga. Thanks, Finn. And a follow on question then to that. Uh, this person wants to know if you come from an English speaking school, can you still do the Irish teaching? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, there, there's no doubt about that. And some, some of the uh, best students that we have in Rhine are have come from English speaking schools. That's that's absolutely not a problem. Very good. Um, another question then. During your four years, can you do subbing? Yeah. Uh, it, <laughs> It's you, you'll certainly be asked to do subbing by the schools again, going back to that teacher supply issue um, college colleges is, is, is a busy place uh, and it's a busy time. But that said, you do not start uh, until late January uh, in semester two. You may finish a little bit early in December. You may finish a little bit early in May and there might be opportunities in, in those spaces for you to, to engage in teaching. Absolutely. Um, when you're on school placement, you sometimes find schools are stuck and they, they ask, would you do additional classes? And again, we have no we have no objection uh, towards that as long as you're not being asked to do too much, as long as it doesn't impact upon your studies, as long as you're not being um, maybe asked to do too much. As I say, well-meaning school may not realize all the other things that you have to do as part of your program. So it's 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 a very personal thing, uh, but what we do like is we re and it, it happened today. For example, a, a student sent me an email saying exactly that they were offered subbing and they wanted advice uh, and we we won't be telling you uh, what you can and can't do. We will offer advice uh, and because of our relationship with our students, uh, the students come come our way and say, look, Finn, what do you think? Do you think it's doable? Do you think it's possible? And uh, and they do the same with other staff members, not just me. And it's through conversation. And you know, we have a really good school placement office. We've got really good people working in there. Charlie 
people you might know through the world of sport is our school players and officer. And again, Charlie can offer um, heaps of advice around subbing and what's doable and what's new and what's not doable. But yeah, we, we don't have an objection to it, but we do like to monitor it in case uh, it, it, what's being asked might be a little bit more burdensome than people might think. Thanks, Finn. Uh, next question is, when are mature students contacted after applying? Um, I think if I have it right, they're, they're contacted earlier than the uh, regular, we'll say CEO leaving cert track, uh, and they're contacted first. I have it in my head, Pat, you might know more about this than me, but I have it in my head that it's sometime uh, early summer so that they get the opportunity to plan meet us, prepare, get things in motion so that they can they can hit the ground running in, in September. I haven't got the exact dates, but I do know that we prioritize the mature students to 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 be formally approved first. Yeah, thanks for that, Finn. And I suppose you can always just keep an eye on our website or you can give Finn an email or the MIC admissions office as well, admissions at mic.ul.ie as well, if, if you're wondering about that. Um, next question then is it's another one to do with Irish Finn. This person wants to know what advice would you give to students who are 100% uh, looking to do Irish teaching at MIC but are very unsure as to what the set what second subject to choose? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a uh, it, 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 it's a good one. Um, I, I think what what you again we go back to the basic line of what are you interested in? Um, what area would you like to be teaching other than your Gaelga? Uh, another dimension to it that the, the, the person who asked that very good question may or may not have asked um, or thought of rather is teaching the other subject through Irish, which could happen as well because you might get a job in a Gaelga uh, you might get a job so and um, it's, it's a hard question to answer because you really have to have an interest in your other subject as well as your Gaelga subject. Um, currently our Gaelga is lined up with religion, it's lined up with business and it's lined up with maths. So they're the three choices that we currently have that um, tie in with, with, with Gaelga. Um, and just as an aside, it's probably not answering the question Pat directly, but or even indirectly, but we also have set up this year, we work very closely with the Gael Kalashta and, uh, and the Skull and the Gael Tuchta, and we have additional modules, optional additional modules, where students can learn more about how to teach their other subject through the medium of Irish, and that links then as well to school placement, and we give additional support to students who would go out on placement to a Gael Skull or um, sorry, a Gael Kalashta or uh, a Skull Gael Tuchta, and that gives gives them that opportunity to see how they're getting on with their other subject. But in advance of, 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 of coming uh, on board in MIC Thorless, I would say really it's a question of what, what are you interested in most? Is it business? Is it uh, matter, uh, mathematics or is it is it religion? Uh, and that you, you you make your decision based on your interest in those subjects. Um, currently, the, the subjects of highest demand from a teacher supply point of view would be Gaelga and mathematics. Um, that's that's the current situation for sure. Thanks, Finn. Uh, some good advice there. Uh, next question is to do with uh, school mm -hmm. placement. During the placements, do you take full control of classes or do you work alongside the class teacher? Good question. Yeah, we, we have a graduated approach to school placement. So uh, school placement is both an exciting and daunting time for our students. So we prepare you in year one before you go out on placement in year two, do lots of work, um, uh, micro teaching, approximate teaching, videoing, uh, videoing yourself, uh, sharing that, discussing pluses, minuses, other options that you might have considered choosing and so forth so that you're quietly confident as you step out into the world of teaching. When you get to the school, and this is why we choose the schools in tandem with yourselves uh, and with our school placement office, when you get to the school, you will be assigned a cooperating teacher, uh, a Troree as they're called now, and your Troree is the person who will guide and support you within the school. 
Ideally, we would not like you to teach um, a class on your own on the first day. We would like you to have a lead in period where you would observe classes. We would like you to have a lead in period where you might team teach with your cooperating teacher and then slowly but surely you are given more control and more authority and then you take the class and your cooperating teacher is there as an additional support. They may stay in the class, they may leave. Uh, it depends on, on what the school wishes to do. What we also do uh, quite a lot of, and I think we're relatively unique, is that we pair our students up quite often as well. And you can go out on school placement in pairs and you can even team teach in pairs uh, again with the school support. So that's year two. So it's kind of a, a graded uh, approach to entering into the world of teaching. And then by the time you get to year four, again, you would have and we would recommend that you would have, for example, your first week in year four on placement would involve working with established teachers and so forth. But really, four years are very anxious to, to either team teach with a colleague or have their own class. Uh, and they're they're ready to go in that sense. And I suppose as an aside, Pat, with year threes, if you don't travel abroad, you can spend your two weeks in year three on placement in the school that you will be going to in year four. So that's like a, an, an induction process and that makes the move then into year four a lot more seamless and a, and, and a lot easier. But you know, we're very conscious of, look, if you were if you were getting your hair cut in the morning and somebody was on placement in the barbers, you would expect that the person on placement would not be cutting your hair on the first day. And similarly, when it comes to teaching, we expected that it's a gradual supportive approach until you're ready then to, to take the lesson and the class yourself. Thanks, Fair. Next question is to do with the Guerta placement. Uh, this person wants to know when is it, how long is it and what happens during that trip? OK, well, I'm not too sure about what all the things that happen on the Grail uh, trip and maybe I don't want to know either. But what we do have is it's the end of first year, it's the end of third year and it's for two week duration and we alternate usually between uh, the, the west of Ireland as in uh, Galway and Kerry and we have on Rhine in Waterford. And uh, if you're in one of those places in year one, then you're in the other place in year three. So usually it's the last two weeks uh, in May. Uh, that would be the usual rhythm. Unfortunately, this year it looks like it's not going to be happening and, and we're making online provision in that regard. And um, sorry, maybe I should answer the, the third part of that question with, with a, a more serious answer. There is There is a strong link between what you pursue uh, on your two weeks, uh, so Gael talked with it being a teacher preparation program. So, for example, you would have opportunities to learn more about the other subject and how you might teach it, what are the resources out there and so forth. And obviously you are all the time looking at the quality of your spoken Irish, uh, but also your written Irish. And they, they, they are fit to fight in the sense of Rhina Gaelga in Thurles works very closely with the providers in the Gaeltacht and there is a connection and a continuation of, of the key goals of our programme. Thanks, Finn. Next question, can you go back to your old school for your second year placement? You can. Uh, if, if the, the way we operate is that you have two key placements, year two and year four. You can't go to the same school twice and you can't go to the same type of school twice. So let's say you went to uh, a convent school, an all girls convent school in year two, then you would probably end up in a school of mixed gender in, in year four. If you go to uh, a community school in year two, then you might go to a Christian brother school in year four. So we, we, we can tease out the, the, the differences there. You can certainly go to the school you were in uh, in year two, if that makes sense for you to do so, but you can't go there in year four then because of what I just said. But yeah, the, 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 we usually give you three options and we discuss with you individually then about those options. We then make contact with the school 
uh, and we take it from there. Obviously, many students have connections, which is great, but not every student has connections. Uh, and, you know, quite often, if you're a mature student and you might have lost all connections with education for a while, that's where we can help you enormously in, in that we take responsibility to ensure that you have a place. And as I said, this year we're working with 225 schools, uh, 300 students on placement, and um, the, the support has been phenomenal from, from the schools, absolutely phenomenal, and uh, this year more than ever. And that support then means that we build up a relationship and we, we can look out for, for you before you go on placement and we can talk to the school on your behalf as well if needs be. Thanks, Finn. Um, next question then, after completing a degree with MIC, would you be employable as a teacher abroad? Yes, absolutely. You're, you're registered with the Teaching Council and you're recognised as a teacher abroad, uh, not just within the European Union, uh, but beyond. And not only are you recognised, you're highly valued. Uh, because a lot of programmes would be very short circuited in the sense that they might be as short as six weeks. You've done a four year concurrent programme uh, and I'm not aware of any country in the world that, that doesn't recognise your qualification as a post primary teacher uh, from MIC Thurlis. I haven't come across anybody having any issues. Uh, that's great to know Finn. Next question is to do with uh, someone who's a bit worried about maths. Um, does the maths become much more difficult than leaving cert level? Yeah, uh, I, I, I suppose really we, we'd have to introduce you to uh, our key maths lecturer, uh, Derek. Um, but I guess it's a different type of maths in many ways. Yes, it aligns with the Leaving Cert, but we do have additional supports there uh, in that you would have that academic support and that you would have access to the, the, to the, the, the additional uh, maths tutor. Um, the other advantage is that Derek is obviously very approachable, but our, our numbers are small, so you have that uh, opportunity to ask questions. And uh, as as the program develops, I'll be able to answer that question a bit more. But maths only started last year, so we're only in year two uh, and everybody is doing fine. Um, but, you know, uh, ideally uh, that's a question that um, we should try and get our students to, to answer. Uh, it's a very good question, but I, I don't know the nitty gritty about mathematics uh, from the point of view of leaving third versus third level, but I do know it's different. Uh, but I also know there are lots of supports there to help you with that difference. Thanks, Finn. Great to know those supports are there. Another subject question then, uh, this person wants to know, would you be OK doing uh, religious studies even if uh, your school didn't do it as an exam subject? Yeah, absolutely. You don't need to have studied religion in your Leaving Cert or any exam for that matter for you to study it uh, on campus with us. And that applies to accounting and business as well. Um, so Leaving Cert uh, business, if you didn't do it, uh, but you have a grow and a passion for, for business, then you certainly can uh, pursue that program uh, provided you have the points in your Leaving Cert uh, as the case may be. Uh, thanks, Finn. Uh, next question then. Have you been working 100% online since September or has the school, I presume that means college, uh, returned and had to resort to online since the beginning of January? Uh, we've, we've been online since, uh, really, we've been online since March, I guess, in that we, we, we were shut uh, during the, the first lockdown. We were about to open in September and then it was deemed uh, not appropriate to do so, mainly because uh, uh, Minister Harris uh, made the correct uh, observation that there would be a lot of crisscrossing the country uh, among young people in order to get to college and so forth. And while we were bitterly disappointed with that, uh, we responded and we are online and we have been online uh, since September. So it's, it's, it's nothing new to us uh, at this moment in time. But um, while we're tempted to, to see if we could open, the reality is that we have students, as I say, coming from every county in Ireland. They, 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 they come to Thurlis. So it uh, is much uh, a, a wiser and safer option is to keep the campus closed until it's safe to open. Uh, and we operate online, as I say, as a result of that. But the thing about online is that we, we have built uh, an online community 
And uh, as I said, the, the, the first years, uh, the attendance is very high uh, and the retention is very high. And um, I teach the first years and the fourth years in semester one. So I was able to track uh, and keep an eye on people. And uh, overall, you know, it's not the same as face to face. It is a compromised position. But uh, as far as it goes, we, we've done, I think we've done as well as we can. And when I say we, I mean the students as well, because they had to learn about what online learning meant as well. Uh, and it also brought a kind of a democratic thing to it in the sense of it, it not that there was ever a strong them and us sense in Torless anyway, but there was even less because we were trying to figure things out together. And sometimes students have the answer uh, and not necessarily the lecture. Uh, and some students are very tech savvy and they were able to assist us. Uh, I know today I was online with four of my students, year fours who are on school placement and I'm their placement tutor. I obviously am not going out to schools. They're obviously working from home online and the, the wealth of material that they were using and showing me today and all I was doing was smiling. I say, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using this with my first years next week. And and that that interplay um, I think has been a very rich dimension to what is a very sad and stark time and enforced um, online uh, uh, engagement. Thanks, Finn. Um, we have an assessment question next. Um, this person wants to know when do exams take place during the course? Yeah, what we would have is is two types of exams. We would have continuous assessment, and we have what we'd call terminal exams. And they, the, the terminal exams happen twice a year, December and May, and you progress from one to the other as per university regulations. And the continuous assessment then is the other percentage of the, the, the assessment for any particular module that you may be studying. And that can happen across the year. And one of the things we do in Thorless is that we bring all the staff together and we say, OK, how much of it is going to be uh, at the end, a bit like the leaving cert at the end of a module and how much of it is going to be assessed across the, the, the program, be it through quiz, be it through essay submission, be it through poster submission, poster presentation and so forth. And we map it then accordingly so that we try, we don't always succeed, but we try to reduce the pressure points and we try and spread out the tasks that are involved, uh, the assessment tasks that each lecturer would bring. It also allows us to see the, the bigger picture and that we're not just looking at our own assessment and we're looking at it from the perspective of, well, what's it like to be a student if you're studying business and accounting? Whoops, we have too many assess, uh, continuous assessments happening in week five. We go back, we revisit and we rejig. Um, so that's that's where we are with assessment. Uh, we're a strong believer in formative assessment in the sense that every opportunity is a learning opportunity. So if you don't do as well as you wish, you can have a conversation with your relative lecturer. If something goes wrong and you fail, we obviously can come and support you with additional supports there as well. If you fall ill and a lot of people obviously are falling ill or are caring for people who are ill, we have other other grading systems which are very human and um, allow us to respond in a human way to any additional concerns, issues, responsibilities that students may have that impact uh, upon, upon their assessments. So we're flexible. If you fail, you have the opportunity to repeat. And if you pass the repeat, then you progress with with the group. Um, so I think it's I think it's a humane assessment um, procedure and, and protocols that we have in, in MIC, both Thorless and Limerick. Thanks, Finn. You touched on this a little bit earlier, Finn, but um, this question, if more PLC applicants apply than the number of places available, what happens then? Yeah, we, 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 we let, let, let's agree that we'll have a look, OK? Uh, I'd be very slow to stop anybody from coming on campus uh, if they if they meet the requirements. Uh, we have plans to expand our campus, uh, so we may well be able to expand uh, the number of places that we can offer. But uh, I certainly at this point wouldn't be concerned about that. If if you're in 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 that further ed space 
and you're interested in teaching uh, and you fulfill the requirements, as I say, the number of distinctions required for business accounting or the business religion program, then I would be fully confident that there would be a place for you in Taurus. So just focus, focus on your studies, uh, control what you can control and uh, we'll do our best to, to pick up the pieces thereafter. Thanks, Finn. And the uh, I think this might be the final question of the night. It's um, if you want to do business with one of the other subjects, are you qualified to teach economics to leaving search honors too? Yeah, my 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 understanding is that you are. Now the teaching council have have issued guidelines just very recently, Pat, and I, I'd need to chase up just to see if there's any variation on that. But uh, my my gut is telling me that that wouldn't be a challenge, and I'm not aware that it has come up uh, as a challenge. When you do business, um, by the way, you also do uh, a, a, an element of accounting uh, within that. And I know that junior cycle would have uh, the proportions of accounting, enterprise and business and uh, at leaving cert level. My understanding is that you would be able to uh, teach economics, but I will clarify that if that person wants to send me an email subsequently, uh, I can clarify that that particular issue to, to be sure. I'll talk to my colleagues in the business department. Thanks, Finn. One or two questions you've just uh, dropped in there just while you're speaking. Yeah. Um, how many students is there per class? Good question. Lecture wise, uh, we would have, uh, you could have upwards of 150 attending a lecture, which is the two hour, but our tutorials would very rarely go over 25. So our tutorial size is usually between 20 and, and 25. And then the Carden, which would be the Gwelga workshops, we, we would have between 15 and 18 would be a figure there. And uh, that again allows for group interaction, discussion. Those of you who, who uh, suffer through my presentation might have seen the number of photos where people are actively working together and so forth. And if you're curious about that as well, we do push uh, collaborative work uh, and collaboration isn't everybody's cup of tea. We know that, but it is important uh, as you qualify as a teacher to understand that you will be collaborating and working with others. In that regard, we also work with the National Parents Council just to, 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 to add that point. Uh, and they do a, a program with us around uh, engaging and working productively with parents. And curiously, the skill set that comes from that is transferable across all that you do as a teacher. And it's really based on the ability to engage with others, to improve your interpersonal skills, to improve your ability to ask questions, to maybe take some um, information on board and how to how to use that, how to engage with somebody who might be cross with you or cross with the system and so on and so forth. So there's a whole range of skills that we're developing that involve up, upskilling uh, students in, in that collaborative space. And um, mm -hmm. we, we, we would think it very important that you can operate as an individual, but that you also can operate uh, as a team player. And, and that tension between the two, I think is, is part of our success, to be honest, because when students go for interview after graduating from our college, they're well able to give examples of the collaborative practice that principals are looking for in their schools because the days of one person being able to do everything in education uh, are long gone. And that would include, by the way, working with special needs assistance as well. That's another dimension to that collaborative preparation. Uh, thanks, Finn. Time is almost up, Finn, but we have maybe two or three more questions. You might yeah, uh, sure. quickly run through them. No. So as a mature applicant, is there any advice you could give me to help secure a place? Um, I, I, I think the um, the most important thing is is to talk to us. Um, we won't prevent you from securing a place. What I'm concerned about is somebody who doesn't do their research and joins us and then realizes maybe two or three weeks into it, it's not for them. Now, thankfully, it very, very rarely happens, especially with matures. And I think one of the reasons it doesn't happen is because we meet with the matures and we have the conversation. So I think the most important thing is to fill out that application that you're asked to fill out as a mature applicant, put in as much detail as you possibly can. 
really think about why you want to become a teacher and then in preparation for meeting us, draw up a list of questions that you would like answered by us. And again, I'm stressing you will probably have more questions than we will have for you. And that's why I'm avoiding the word interview. Or if you want to use the word interview, let's flip it and say when you interview us uh, to see if the, the college matches your needs. Um, it's important that you use that opportunity to allay some of your fears. Uh, if you know of people who are already on the program, uh, I think that's an important source as well to go and ask people. Um, and if you don't and you would like to talk to mature students, do let us know and we'll put you in contact with mature students who have graduated or mature students who are currently on the program. We've done that and that's proven to be very beneficial because you've got mature students talking to mature students and it usually seals the deal uh, on, on coming our way. Uh, thanks, just another one there, Finn. Um, would accounting be difficult if you only did business for Leaving Cert? Um, I, 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 again, I think it's just, it's, it, it applies to any subject. It's, it's about attitude. You, you, you're starting from scratch. You've got two accounting lecturers that are very approachable and thoroughless. You go into their class. Uh, the big lecturers that I spoke about for education, they don't apply in accounting. You have very small numbers, you might have 25 as the lecture. So a lecture and a tutorial are very similar to each other. It's a great opportunity to ask questions, to build a relationship with your lecturer, build relationships with your with your new classmates. And between between asking questions and answering questions, I have no doubt that you will progress. In fact, from talking to, to, to Madeline and Olive, I know that sometimes because of the 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 the, the, the tilt that they put on accounting, the third level accounting puts on accounting. It's different to second level and sometimes you, you can nearly be better off if you haven't studied accounting, if you know what I mean, uh, because um, the, 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 the modes and methods that you used in, in second level may not always apply. So I wouldn't be put off at all uh, if you were interested in accounting, but just weren't lucky enough to have the experience in your school, because I know not every school can offer accounting. And final one or two then, um, Finn, when does Garda Vetting and Fitness to Teach need to be completed? Yeah, uh, we do Garda vet Vetting at the very start and the good news about Garda Vetting is that you have that then for your four year program. Uh, fitness to, to practice is uh, slightly different, but uh, we would be very strong on if you have uh, a disability, if you have a, a visual impairment, impairment or a hearing impairment and you still want to teach then come our way and we make it happen and we have already made it happen and we have success stories there as well. So the fitness to practice piece isn't uh, something that's required immediately. It's what you need to complete when you uh, go out on school placement in year two. But that said, if you have concerns about your fitness to practice, it doesn't prevent you from coming to college. We would encourage you to come to college, but obviously we'd encourage you to have a conversation with us around what does that actually mean in the context of learning, first of all, and also in the context of being a teacher. And look, we pride ourselves on being an inclusive campus uh, and we will do all we can to include whoever wishes to become a teacher uh, in so far as we possibly can. And technology is our friend as well. Uh, and that's improving all the time as well. Sorry, Pat, I, I lost you there. I can see you, but I can't Sorry, hear you. Sorry, yeah. can you hear me yeah. now? Yeah. What advice would you give to someone who is on the fence about pursuing a business teaching course or instead just a general business course? Uh, I, I, I think uh, sitting on the fence is, is a good place to be. Uh, but you can't stay there too long. And if I can encourage you to come down to our side of the fence, I would be saying you could study business for three or four years and you could have a BA in business. Or you could come our way and you study business for three or four years and you have your BA in business, one other subject, and you have a teaching qualification. Even after the four years, if you decide, you know what, I'm not going to use this teaching qualification, you still have the world of business opening up for you. And if I can give you an example, 
And there was a student a few years ago who decided that they didn't want to teach immediately. It's not that they didn't like teaching. It's just that they didn't want to teach immediately and they wanted to go into the world of uh, commerce and they got a job in one of these large reputable companies and uh, I was in contact with them subsequently and I said, how was it going? I said, uh, where are we at with the, the grow for the teaching? And uh, she said to me, she said, Finn, you know, it's funny. She said, I still have that, um, how would you say, that passion and that desire to teach. But she said, I'm using so many of my teaching skills here anyway. She said, I'm head of induction in this company. I'm the one that mentors the mentors. I'm using all my teaching skills on a daily basis to induct new people into the accounting department, actually, as it happened. Uh, so the, the, the answer to the questions, the person sitting on the fence, to, to hop off the fence and come our way, I think it gives you more opportunities than if you were to just pursue a business um, program per se. Uh, and at the end of the four years, I think it gives you a lot more choice. And it's not an either or because the teaching skills you can deploy uh, as you work in the world of business. And obviously, our generation of graduates will become school leaders in time and principals and inspectors and so forth. And the business acumen and their understanding and study of leadership, for example, uh, obviously assists uh, those who go into education and pursue uh, careers in administration and beyond. Thanks very much, Finn. Um, look, I'm afraid time has come against us, so I'd just like to thank Finn um, for his presentation this evening and for answering so many questions there. For we we've. If there was one or two questions maybe we did, that we didn't get to, uh, Finn kindly left his email address up there. It's finn.omaraku at mic.ul.ie. And you can always go to uh, the mic.ie website. Any of our program pages, we have a public Q&A function there where you can type in your question and someone at the college will get back to you with an answer. So the next session in our series will be next Monday. That's the 25th of January at 5 p.m. And that uh, session will be on our student services. So if you have any queries or questions about accommodation, about access and disability, about uh, sports scholarships or student fees, then definitely tune in on the 25th of January. So um, thanks very much again to Finn. Um, and thanks for everyone else for, for listening tonight and um, we will hopefully see you all again next Monday.